was nothing more than an opium trading empire, which, still to this day, is the corporate arm of the Skull and Bone Secret Society. William Huntington Russell had travelled in Germany during his student years and was befriended by a disciple of Adam Weishaupt's Bavarian Illuminati. Upon returning to the USA in the early 1800s, Russell used some of his family's opium wealth to fund the building of the tomb at Yale University. Russell initiated several of his fellow classmates, including Alfonso Taft, who would go on to become the Secretary of War and ambassador to Russia. Alfonso Taft's son became President of the United States, and so a time-honored tradition of hereditary membership of the Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death was begun. We see this tradition continued to this day, with senior Bones men encouraging young initiates to marry into each other's families, their sons and daughters following in their parents' footsteps and becoming disciples of this most unholy of orders. In her fascinating book, American journalist Alexandra Robbins claims to have unearthed a skull and bones plan to dominate the world. One can't help recognizing the fact that in the 170 years since the formation of the Skull and Bone Society, it has members in the most influential jobs all over the world. New initiates seem to fall effortlessly into high-paid jobs within banks, media organizations, government agencies, and huge corporations which earn vast profits from government defense contracts. Some researchers claim that all members agree to tithe their wealth over to the society, thus ensuring that their offspring will become future initiates of the Brotherhood of Death. The Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death recruits members from America's billionaire aristocracy. Multiple generations of the Bush family have taken part in sick satanically inspired rituals along with members of wealthy families who are behind some of America's most famous brand names. Based on the rituals of the German Bavarian Illuminati, the Skull and Bones have approximately 900 members worldwide. George W. Bush has initiated five fellow Bonesmen to join his administration, including William Donaldson, who is head of the American Securities and Exchange Commission. Upon initiation into the Skull and Bones, candidates are told that they must forever deny their membership. The psychological mind programming and brainwashing which goes on inside the tomb can only be guessed at, as no bonesman has ever broken the fraternity's rule of silence. Fellow students at Yale have often said that on the night of ceremonies, blood-curdling yells and shrieks can be heard from inside the tomb. Some say the initiates are forced to wrestle in mud and are even beaten. This technique has been used by the CIA and EST brainwashing organizations who seek to wear down the subject mentally and physically using a program of punishment and verbal abuse. Once the will of the candidate has been broken and they have divulged all their sexual secrets to the elder bonesmen, they stand naked and are reborn in a mockery of a Christian baptism with elder bonesmen dressed as the Pope and the devil conducting the ritual. Ron Rosenbaum is a journalist who writes for the New York Observer. He secretly filmed an initiation ceremony from the top of a building near the Skull and Bones headquarters. Members of the order dress up as the devil, the pope, and a kind of Don Quixote character.
The Pope wears a white monogrammed slipper which rests upon a stone skull. Each initiate is led into a chamber where fellow members shout obscenities and abuse the new initiate. The initiates are told that they are superior beings and are part of a privileged elite who use war, terror and famine to control Earth's human population. This callous philosophy was illustrated in the Hollywood movie Skulls, made in 1999. Over the years there have been several break-ins um, at the tomb, which is the headquarters of the Skull and Bones at Yale University. Um, the artefacts which have been found have included membership lists of another secret society which operates on the campus called the Scroll and Key. Now it seems pretty obvious uh, as we research this material that the wolf's head, Phoebe to Kappa, uh, the Scroll and Key, and Skull and Bones are all different flavours of the same Bavarian Illuminati secret society. One by one, each new member is thrust to his knees and bows before the devil. A naked woman is ceremoniously assaulted with a dagger. The devil lays each initiate into a coffin and a ribbon is tied to their genitalia. Everyone is encouraged to divulge their entire sexual life history whilst masturbating. With all their innermost secrets known to the other Bonesmen, the new initiates are threatened with blackmail if they ever reveal the secrets of this Masonic order. At this point, they are dressed in long robes and rechristened with their occult names. The Don Quixote character taps each member on the shoulder with a silver sword and proclaims, By our order, I dub thee Knight of Eulogia. We can exclusively reveal that George Bush Sr.'s occult name is Magog, which is the name of the evil army commanded by Satan to visit Earth and destroy the Kingdom of Christ. The American Ivy League colleges each have their own branches of the Skull and Bones Brotherhood of Death, indoctrinating the children of America's elite families who go on to become the captains of industry, banking, law, military and the media. The epicenter of this elite cabal is Yale University. The last three presidents attended Yale, as did the terrorist expert Paul Bremer III, who governs Iraq for the Bush-Cheney Skull and Bones elite. Members of the Anglo-American Illuminati network also share the same philosophy. They believe in a single all-powerful superstate, which is governed by a single world leader. If the Illuminati were successful, and their dream would come true, it would be a virtual hell on earth. That is what the New World Order is all about. It's a living hell. It's Orwell's worst dream and nightmare. Well, to understand the philosophy of the Skull and Bone Society, you have to understand the philosophy of 18th and 19th century Germany with people such as Hegel. Now, the dialectic system, the dialectical political system, was not devised by Karl Marx. It was actually developed by Hegel, Fichte, and uh, also contributed to by Kant. These German philosophers uh, believed that you could 
create change in society by conflict. And this could be, for example, political conflict, uh, the conflict between left and right. From this conflict, a new political system would come about, and this would be a synthesis of the two views. Now, that sounds pretty innocent, but in actual fact, the dialectical system is used in military combat as well. And Hegel's plan, uh, which is being actually carried out right now, is to create conflict, to create wars. And through the creation of wars, several things happen. First of all, the companies which manufacture the missiles, the guns, the bullets, the uniforms, and all of the paraphernalia to do with uh, warfare, all make huge profits. Uh, secondly, uh, there is a culling of the male population. Since the 1950s, we've had several reports from think tanks that feed information into the European Union, the British government, also the American government, which are recommending depopulation. And there is uh, several plans uh, which we believe have been put in motion right now. And obviously war is one way of depopulating uh, the planet. While the American people sing the star-spangled banner, the most powerful people in the USA and Europe salute the ancient symbol of the Brotherhood of Death. In the book, Who's Who of America's Elite, the author has found that the Order of the Skull and Bones encourages its members to intermarry, thus keeping their spectacular wealth all in the family. Good evening. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for evil and the very worst of human nature. I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those who want peace and security in the world and to bring them to justice. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and the victims of the American economy. Our military is evil and it's prepared. Our country is evil, deliberate and deadly evil. All that is evil, comforted by evil, and no one will keep that evil from shining. And on behalf of the American power greater than any of us, I thank the many world leaders who have called to offer their financial institutions and assistance. America and our terrorist friends and allies join with all those who want despicable chaos and terrible evil. And we stand together to win the war against all that is good and just. None of us will ever find those responsible. Thank you. Good night.